As the clock struck midnight, I found myself unable to sleep. My worries had kept me awake, and the image of my teenage daughter, Lily, walking alone on the deserted streets of our small town gnawed at my heart. She had gone out with her friends earlier in the evening, and the plan was for her to return home by 10 p.m. But the hours had passed, and she was nowhere to be found. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. I grabbed my jacket and car keys, determined to find her. My wife, Emily, stirred in her sleep as I slipped out of our bedroom, but I didn't want to wake her with my irrational fears. The night was dark and eerily quiet as I drove through the empty streets of our town. The only illumination came from the occasional flickering street lamp. My heart raced with each passing minute, and I couldn't help but replay all the horror stories I had heard about this town. The tales of unexplained disappearances and haunted places. I reached the park where Lily and her friends had gathered earlier. It was supposed to be a safe place, well lit and regularly patrolled by the police. But tonight, it felt different, as if the darkness had swallowed up all traces of safety. Swings swayed gently in the wind, their creaking filling the air with an eerie rhythm. I called out for Lily, my voice shaky and barely audible. There was no response, only the echo of my own fear bouncing back at me. I scanned the area, my eyes darting from one shadowy corner to another. And then I saw it, a faint flickering light in the distance. With a sense of dread, I followed the light, my footsteps echoing on the empty pavement. The light led me to an old, decrepit building on the outskirts of the park, a place that had been abandoned for years. It was rumored to be haunted, a place where no one dared to venture after dark. But there, standing in front of the building, was Lily. She was holding a lantern, its feeble glow barely enough to reveal her terrified expression. I rushed towards her, relief washing over me like a tidal wave. Lily, thank goodness I found you. What are you doing here? Tears streamed down her face as she whispered, Dad, I can't explain it. We were in the park and suddenly I felt this overwhelming urge to come here to this place. It's like something was calling me, pulling me towards it. I tried to comfort her, but my unease lingered. I glanced at the building, its windows shattered and its walls covered in graffiti. The stories about this place rush back into my mind. The tales of restless spirits and malevolent forces that had tormented those who dared to enter. We turned to leave, but as we did, we heard a low, guttural growl coming from inside the building. It was followed by the sound of shuffling footsteps, slow and deliberate, growing closer with each passing moment. Panic surged through me as I grabbed Lily's hand, and we started running towards the park. The growling and footsteps pursued us, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister was right behind us, something that shouldn't exist in the realm of the living. The park seemed farther away than it had ever been, and my heart pounded in my chest like a relentless drum. We finally reached the park, gasping for breath, but the growling and footsteps had ceased. It was as if the darkness that had pursued us had retreated, vanishing into the night. I held Lily close, and we made our way back to the car, leaving behind the haunted building and the horrors that lurked within. As we drove home, the fear still gripped us. What had compelled Lily to go to that forsaken place? What had chased us through the darkness? The questions remained unanswered, and the horror of that fateful night haunted us for years to come. The night was dark and cold, with a heavy silence Hanging in the air, a young teenage girl found myself walking alone down a dimly lit street, my heart pounding in my chest. It was a shortcut I had taken a hundred times during the day, but at night it transformed into a sinister alleyway, shrouded in an eerie mist. The streetlights flickered overhead, casting long, ominous shadows that danced around me as I walked. The only sounds were the echo of my footsteps and the distant hoot of an owl. Goosebumps prickled my skin as a chilling wind whispered through the trees, their branches creaking like ghostly fingers beckoning me forward. I quickened my pace, 
clutching my phone tightly in one hand, ready to call for help at the first sign of danger. The houses lying the street were dark and foreboding, their windows like empty, soulless eyes watching my every move. I tried not to think about the stories I'd heard of this place, a place where strange things happened after dark. As I turned a corner, I felt a sudden sensation that someone was behind me. I glanced over my shoulder, but there was nothing there, just an empty street, devoid of life. I chalked it up to my imagination, playing tricks on me and kept walking, my heart still racing. But the feeling of being watched persisted, growing stronger with every step. My breaths became shallow, my steps hesitant, and my mind raced with paranoid thought. I could swear I heard faint whispers carried by the wind, unintelligible, but undeniably malevolent. Just a few more blocks, and I'd be out of this dreadful place. I clung to that thought my only lifeline, as I rounded another corner. And that's when I saw it, a figure standing beneath a flickering streetlight at the end of the... It was shrouded in darkness, a silhouette that seemed to melt into the night. Fear paralyzed me as I watched the figure, unable to tear my gaze. The figure started to move toward me, slowly at first, then with increasing panic surged through my veins, and I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum. I could hear footsteps, heavy and deliberate, chasing after me. I sprinted down the desolate street, my breaths ragged, tears streaming down my face. The footsteps grew louder and closer, and I could almost feel the presence of whatever was pursuing me its malevolence closing in. Finally, I burst out onto a well-lit street, gasping for breath, and glanced back one last time. But I knew one thing for sure. I would never take that shortcut again, and the horrors of that night would haunt my dreams for years to come. As I left the office that night, the dimly lit street stretched out before me, casting long, eerie shadows that seemed to dance with each step I took. The city had an eerie quietness about it, and the only sounds that pierced the silence were the distant hum of traffic and the occasional gust of wind that whispered secrets in my ear. I had stayed late at work to finish a crucial project, and as a dedicated employee, I often found myself working into the late hours of the night. It wasn't the first time I had walked alone in the dark, but something about this night felt different. The streetlights flickered ominously as if they were struggling to hold back the encroaching darkness. As I walked, my footsteps echoed loudly in the empty street. I could feel my heart pounding, a mix of adrenaline and fear coursing through my veins. The rational part of my mind tried to assure me that it was just my imagination, that there was nothing to be afraid of, but the stories I had heard from co-workers about this part of town crept into my thoughts. My phone buzzed and I fumbled to answer it. It was a text from a colleague asking if I had left the office yet. I replied with a quick yes and told them I was on my way home. I hoped that chatting with someone would ease my unease. As I continued down the desolate street, the distant traffic noise faded and I was left with an unsettling silence. The buildings around me seemed to loom closer their darkened windows like vacant eyes watching my every move. I quickened my pace, my footsteps echoing louder in my ears. Suddenly a chilling breeze swept through the alley ahead of me, extinguishing the flickering streetlight. I froze, my heart racing, my breath caught in my throat. The darkness felt suffocating, and I desperately fumbled for my phone to use its flashlight. As the dim beam of light pierced the obscurity, I caught a glimpse of something in the shadows. It was a figure hunched and shrouded in tattered clothing, moving slowly toward me. My pulse quickened, and a cold sweat trickled down my spine. Hello, I called out, my voice trembling. The figure didn't respond, but instead continued to inch closer. Panic surged through me, 
and I turned and ran in the opposite direction, my footsteps echoing like thunderclaps in the deserted streets. I dared not look back, fearing what I might see. My mind raced with thoughts of escape, of reaching the safety of my apartment. As I approached the entrance of my building, I fumbled with my keys, praying that I would make it inside before the mysterious figure caught up to me. With trembling hands, I managed to unlock the door, slipping inside just in time. I slammed the door shut, panting heavily as I leaned against it, my heart still pounding. I never saw the figure again, but the memory of that night haunted my dreams for weeks. 